I, I think the One Belt, One Road is an overarching theme which the, the Chinese have uh, designed in order for them to engage and develop their relationships with their region. Their region in Asia, uh, going down into Southeast Asia, South Asia, even East Africa, along the sea line, and their region in Central Asia, the Stans, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, uh, Tajikistan, and so on, which, uh, if you look at it on a big scale map, takes you beyond the Stans into Europe and all the way to, 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 to Rotterdam or London. And uh, it means trade, it means investments, it means connectivity, it means infrastructure projects, it means financial linkages, it means the opportunity for China to increase and build its ties with its neighbors, to benefit its neighbors, but of course at the same time to grow its influence in the region. And from the point of view of the region, the question is, are there opportunities? Is it a plus? And I think the answer is, well, there, can, there are many opportunities. It can be a plus. You have to look at the specific projects to make sure whether they, they, the, the sums add up and they add up from a national point of view or not. But it means that we will, the countries will be able to do more with one another and in the process also with China. Uh, if you look at it from a strategic point of view, does it make sense? I think it does because China's influence is growing. How can the system of countries internationally accommodate this growing influence? It cannot, you cannot conclude that you, you wish it doesn't grow and, well, therefore you stay with the status quo. It is growing. How is it going to be accommodated? And the Belt and Road is one way in which it is going to be, it can be accommodated constructively, peacefully, and win-win. Uh, there are downsides, there are risks for the countries which uh, miscalculate their positions. There are risks for China because if they make bad investments, it may end up making, uh, turning your friends into people who have disputes with you. So both sides have to proceed carefully and you have to have a good feel for, uh, not just for the economics of it, also the political sensitivities and the strategic nuances of what is going on. But I think it's the right approach for them to take. And for Singapore, what can, what can we do? Well, we are a financial center. Uh, our banks, the banks in Singapore, they finance projects all over the region. And if, if, uh, uh, other, our neighbors are building more infrastructure structure projects. That means our banks can help to finance them, support them. Or our, our capital markets, they can raise debt here. They can raise bonds here. It means business for us. Uh, we, have, we are setting up an infra infrastructure office to promote infrastructure projects and in, from a comprehensive way. So we are not only talking about the design and the feasibility, but also the building and the financing, and to bring all the pieces together. This was one of the small items in, in this year's uh, government budget. And uh, so to the extent that Belt and Road means infrastructure, it means, well, there are opportunities for us there too. And most specifically, if you look at our project in Chongqing, the Chongqing Connectivity Initiative, that is uh, one of the projects which taps into the concept of Belt and Road because it's at the start of the, uh, the belt, which means the land route through Central Asia, Chongqing going westwards across the border into Kazakhstan and beyond. At the same time, if you come down from Chongqing to Guangxi, reach the sea by a short, relatively short railroad link, you connect up to the sea route and you create a shortcut from southwestern China to the sea and to the outside world. They don't have to sail all the way down the Yangtze River, go to Shanghai and spend another 10 days and some significant amount of money. So that's one of our projects which uh, we have promoted and discuss with the Chinese. They have adopted it. They are happy to do it as a joint G2G project with us. And in particular, they have endorsed the idea of this southern connectivity route to go from Chongqing to Guangxi and to the, to, out to the uh, shipping routes. And I think if that takes off, it will be uh, a plus, a plus in itself and a plus symbolically 
of how we can cooperate with China and benefit the region. Thank you.